The big story of the weekend, and it's still a story today, Eric Reed, obviously a friend, former teammate of Colin Kaepernick, still kneels during the anthem. He had a lot to say. This Jay-Z thing has a lot of bad optics to it. Now, look, I think clearly different people from different backgrounds are going to feel differently here. I'm not going to claim that I'm, like, outraged by what Jay-Z did. Newsflash, I'm not a member of the black community. Does it look like Jay-Z sold out the movement? Yeah, it does. But that's what capitalists do. Jay-Z is not an activist. He's a capitalist. He had an opportunity to make a boatload of money from the NFL, cozy up to Goodell, and probably get a couple steps closer to owning a team by taking this deal, right? Now, as a part of the deal... It sounds like he told a lie that he had talked to Colin Kaepernick. He didn't. And he signed a deal using a lot of the murky language of, well, you know, it's it's going to advance things and there's going to be new stuff. And you're like, well, well, what? My take on it is simple. Any deal signed with the NFL by Jay-Z that doesn't involve Colin Kaepernick or doesn't involve his counsel or his involvement in it is really not a deal at all. It's a shameless cash play. It's exploiting the movement and capitalizing on it. Now, I would tell you if I remembered a black community, I'd be pissed off straight up. I can't sit here and feign outrage. I can say Jay-Z looks awful. I could say it's, it's, it's clown-like behavior. I could say that he hoed a lot of people out. I could say that the imagery of him next to Goodell, when at one point Jay-Z refused to perform in the Super Bowl, at one point Jay-Z took the stage in a Kaepernick jersey. Uh, yeah, I think the optics of that make him look like a clown. And if I remembered a black community, oh my God, I, I would be outraged. Of course. And therefore, I'm not going to knock anyone who is outraged. But I also don't view Jay-Z as an activist. I don't view him as caring about anything other than money. That's it. He's already owned a small piece of a basketball team. He's now going for the whole deal. This is a move to get in the good graces of the league. It comes on the heels of Stephen Ross having a fundraiser for the POTUS that was controversial, to say the least, to many players in the league and fans of the league. Remember, when you go political, left or right, you've probably lost at least half your audience at the start, right? Well, after this kind of bubbling controversy about that fundraiser for the POTUS, this happens. The league signing Jay-Z and Rock Nation and whatever else to be consultants for entertainment and, oh, by the way, be a part of this phony, complete public relations, completely cynical um, move by the NFL called Inspire Change. They're not doing Inspire Change because they care. They're doing Inspire Change because they had to because they needed to act like they cared. So the whole thing is messy. And Eric Reed came out this weekend and crushed Jay-Z. And Stephen A. Smith responded on first take. Uh, and I don't agree with Stephen A.'s perspective here because people are going, well, Eric Reed, you play for an NFL team. We're not talking about the same things. It's the same people who created the straw man of injustice versus the American flag. This was never about the flag. This was about injustice. This is about a cause, right? The bottom line in all of it, Jay-Z's about his business. Now, you can be angry. Depending on your perspective, maybe you should be angry. I guess my point in all of it is I throw the number to you guys and start out on a Monday is, are you really surprised by it? I mean, since when have, have any of us viewed Jay-Z as being an activist or, or somehow being for real? I think Jay-Z is a convenient activist. I think Jay-Z is no different than a lot of people who conveniently offer thoughts and prayers to look good, conveniently are outraged when it benefits them. Jay-Z is a billionaire who got a sweetheart deal and is probably going to be fast-tracked 
the consideration for owning a team. And he took the deal. A year ago, and David found this nugget, a year ago, Jermaine Dupree had an opportunity to take a similar deal with the NFL. Jay-Z advised him, don't take the deal. A year later, he takes the deal, right? Two years ago, he's wearing a Kaepernick jersey on stage. Now, he basically r runs Colin Kaepernick over with a bus. And I don't know what Jay-Z's thinking going out saying he talked to Kaepernick when all signs point towards... He didn't. Yeah, why would you lie about that? Why would you go in your press conference and no say idea. you spoke to him? No idea. All it's, credibility is lost to me when you say that. All credibility is lost if Kaepernick is, is – if he's not on that stage, Kaepernick has got to be a part of whatever deal you sign if you want to maintain any of your credibility. And I, I don't want to just narrow it down to, quote, street cred. I'm talking about general human credibility here. Jay-Z has none. This has nothing to do with Inspire Change. This has everything to do with his brand, everything to do with owning a team, everything to do with taking a sweetheart deal. Now, that's capitalism. Capitalism is not pretty. Capitalism, it, it, it treads on the backs of the bruised. But I, w I will tell you this. If David, and, and you clearly uh, have the ability to speak on this, and I don't, I'm not a member of the black community. If I were, were a black man or a black woman in this country, I would be very pissed at Jay-Z. I, I would term Jay-Z a sellout. You can't end up cozied up to Roger Goodell without Kaepernick being a part of this and without a plan. These are the 5, 7, 10, 15 things that by me doing this, I'm getting the league to do these. Those things aren't in place. It has the feeling of publicly funded stadiums where they go, just wait for the other stuff. It'll stimulate a ton of stuff eventually. And you're like, no, no, it won't. That's what this feels like. So I wanted to throw the number out and give people a shot. Just tell me where you're at with it. 248-539-9797. Go ahead, David. Yeah, the Inspire Change initiative is just a throw-in. This is all about entertainment. This is all about that the report came out a day later. He Jay-Z is going to be a part owner of a team now. Like, this is all just for him and for him only. And the NFL can say, look, we did a solid. Exactly. When in reality, he didn't do anything. And you're saying he's not an activist. Well, if you're not an activist, don't go on stage with a cap shirt. He's don't a convenient go on stage. activist. Yeah, don't, don't do that if you're not going to actually do something to make change. This is not making change. And Jay-Z, under the surface, but in, the, in my community— he was already seen as a sellout when it came to the Brooklyn Nets. Already, because of the gentrification of Brooklyn and that team moving in there and everything changing in that city, his city. Brooklyn's as expensive as Manhattan. He, he looked like and was already seen as a sellout already. So this is no surprise. You're right. This is no surprise. So this let me, is him. Let me put it in terms that will make people a little more comfortable to discuss this. Should Jay-Z be given grief for this deal? Straight up. Yes. You can leave the sellout term out if that makes you uncomfortable. But we do have to look at this from two perspectives. I mean, there's a business angle. And then, look, if you're a member of the black community, if you're someone who absolutely believes in this movement in this country regarding injustice, then I don't know how you look at Jay-Z as anything other than a cold-blooded capitalist and you no longer have the credibility of actually caring about the cause. Him signing that deal without talking to Cap, Signing that deal to become an owner, signing that deal to take advantage of that movement. I mean, I don't know how else you can put it any other way. And yet you don't see, like, I don't know why it's such a hard thing to just say it in plain terms. I mean, Stephen A. was damn near apologetic for Jay-Z. Don't you agree with that? Yeah, a lot of people have been that. But, yes, yeah, Stephen A. was definitely apologetic. And I'm not happy with people doing people on social media all weekend oh leave jay-z alone he's doing what he needs to do i'm sorry in his press conference he said we're beyond kneeling we are i'm sorry i don't see that no I, and again you know what if if you are a cold-blooded capitalist if you are a cold-blooded businessman or businesswoman look nobody can argue that you're good at making money but people can argue the way you do it if guys like Bezos can get criticized or Zuckerberg can get criticized, why can't Jay-Z? And to do it under the pretense of social activism? No, I'm sorry. That, that, that off that's offensive. 
dishonest at best, offensive at worst. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. We'll get to that. We got some college football a little later as well. Ninety seven one.